Once upon a time, there was a couple who had seven sons. They had wished for a daughter, but they hadn't had one yet. Long after that, the wife gave birth to a girl. They were very happy, but the child was sickly and small. The father asked his sons to get some water from the stream to christen his daughter. Look, our daughter is so lovely. But she is sickly and small. She has to be given an emergency baptism. I'll teach her fowling. No, she prefers fishing. I'll teach her fishing. Because each of them wanted to be the first to fill it, the brothers accidentally dropped the jug into the stream. They didn't know what to do, and none of them dared to go home. When they still didn't return, the father grew impatient. He cried out in anger, "They have certainly forgotten it for some game, the wicked boys! I wish they were all turned into ravens." Just after he spoke those words. His sons immediately turned into seven whole black ravens and flew away. The father was very sorry, but he couldn't take back the curse. The jug dropped. What should we do now? It's impossible. There is no way to take it back. Almost got it. Go for it. Go for it. They have certainly forgotten it for some game. The wicked boys. I wish they were all turned into ravens. The parents were very sad at the loss of their seven sons, but they were still somewhat comforted as their daughter grew strong and every day became more beautiful. For a long time, she didn't know that she had had seven brothers. One day. She accidentally heard some people saying that she was to blame for her seven brothers' misfortune. The girl became sad. She went to her parents and asked them if she indeed had had brothers and what had happened to them. Her parents could no longer keep the secret, but said that it had been heaven's fate and that her birth hadn't been the real cause. That little girl looks so beautiful. Yes, she looks beautiful, but because of her, her brothers were cursed. Dad, I have brothers, don't I? Where are they now? Your brothers are lost. It was heaven's fate, not your fault. However, the girl took it to heart daily. She was determined to find her brothers. And rescue them from the curse. She left her home secretly and took nothing but a little ring as a remembrance from her parents, a loaf of bread, a little jug of water, and a little chair for when she got tired. She walked on and on, far, far to the end of the world. She came to the sun, but it was too hot. She hastily ran to the moon, but it was much too cold. The girl came to the stars, which were kind and good to her, and each one sat on its own little chair. The morning star arose, gave her a chicken bone, and said, "This chicken bone will help you open the glass mountain where your brothers are living." Good evening. Oh, what a beautiful girl! Oh, she also has a little chair like me. <laughs> You've come here alone. You're quite brave. I give you this little bone, brave girl. It'll help you open the glass mountain. You'll find your brothers there. Oh, it's great! Thank you very much. The girl thanked the stars. 
wrapped the bone carefully in a cloth, and went on her way again. She walked on and on, and finally she came to the glass mountain. She opened the cloth to take out the bone, but it was empty. She had lost the gift of the good stars. She took a knife, cut off one of her little fingers, and put it into the door. Fortunately, the door opened, and a dwarf appeared. The girl told him that she was looking for her brothers, the seven ravens. The dwarf then said, "The Lord Ravens aren't at home, but if you want to wait here until they return, step inside." Good, good morning. I'm looking for my brothers, the seven ravens. Oh, really? The Lord Ravens aren't at home. But if you want to wait here until they return, step inside. The dwarf carried in the ravens' dinner on seven plates and in seven cups. The girl ate a bit from each plate and took a sip from each cup. In the last cup, she dropped the ring that she had brought with her. Suddenly, she heard a whirring and rushing sound in the air, and the dwarf said, "Ah, the Lord Ravens are flying home now." I'll drop the ring in this cup. If they are my brothers, they'll recognize me. <coughs> ah. The Lord Ravens are flying home now. Then the ravens came. They looked for their plates and cups to eat and drink. One after another, each of them said, "Who has been eating from my plate? Who has been drinking from my cup?" When the seventh raven came to the bottom of his cup, he saw the ring. He realized that the ring was from their parents. And he said, "God grant that our sister may be here, and then we'll be free." What's this? Where? Where? Where is it? It's our parents' ring. God grant that our sister might be here. Really? God blesses us. We'll be set free soon. When the girl heard the wish behind the door, she came forth. Immediately, the ravens turned into her seven brothers. They hugged and kissed one another and went home happily. That's the end of the story. It has a happy ending, doesn't it? Although the girl was little, she herself dared to rescue her brothers. The girl could overcome all difficulties and challenges because she had a brave heart. And endless love for her brothers. We hope that you'll be always good and brave, and get on well with your brothers and sisters. Goodbye, and see you again. Oh, my brothers, I've been looking forward to seeing you. Our sister broke the curse. How marvelous it is! Let's come back to our parents. How excellent you are! How beautiful our younger sister is! One day, it was Tulip's turn to bring lunch to her father. She was Zabadan's youngest, and four little ducks went out one day.